Uh, as we go into this fourth fight, John, that's what I was trying to say over the over the uh, you know all the noise in the background. But what a, what a night of fight so far! I, I mean, for all you listeners that were thinking about coming and didn't show up, you guys are idiots. Hey, you know what? I second that, Billy. This, these have been great fights. You know that woman's fight alone, you know, was a phenomenal fight. And it's funny because when I when we started off the night, you know, with a couple of guys that you know really between two of them had only one fight. And I said, you got what you paid for in that fight. Well, you got what you paid for in the second fight. And you definitely got what you paid for in the third fight. So, so far, every single fight has lived up to its full potential. And I expect we're going to see the same thing again in this fight. Well, you know, this was the one fighter um, that uh, Frank B that I noticed earlier today. And I kept telling you, this guy might be having a hard time making weight because he was walking around spitting in a cup. But... Uh, we had nobody, uh, nobody that had a, an issue with the weight today. So, um, hey, you know it's it's been a it's been a good couple of days here in uh, Brantford. Well, I'll call a spade a spade. I know that Frank lost about three, maybe four pounds this morning. Um, you were at the weigh-ins, Billy, and the, the, I had done a favor for the promoter. And uh, while I was doing that, I, I had actually walked by and saw Frank um, in the process of really doing heavy exercise to sweat down now you know there was a contract issue and uh and chris had gone away they thought the fight was going to be at 147 plus one uh so when chris hit 148 they let him go uh you know chris was eight, was rehydrating when the when frankie came back upstairs to get weighed in and uh you know so there's been a, a little bit of a change in the contract you know frank's been rewarded for cutting that weight um but he, he definitely shredded at least three or four pounds this morning alone well, I tell you, after that last fight, um, I was I'm kind of glad this one. Uh, you know, I mean, it's starting off good, but I'm glad that we don't have the bombs. I needed to take a breath or two here. Well, you know what, Chris Coins cut over his left eye. This was a cut that was initially open not too long ago. Um, he told me that he had got the stitches out the other yesterday. day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was yeah, literally within a week, and he just got the stitches out. I wonder how um, he got open. picked. I wonder, you know, we noticed it when we were talking to him. You could see it. It was still red. Um, usually they, they don't let a fighter fight if he's got a fresh wound like that. I don't know how the, how the doctor missed that. N neither of you or myself, Billy, got a PhD, um, and we picked it up. Oh, oh, solid right hand drops Chris Acoin. Frankie really is the real deal. You know, like I said, he went to Quebec as a massive underdog and stopped the guy that they had put him in the ring to be an opponent with. That was 10-0. and 0. That was the first drop. That was the first knockdown of the, of the night, wasn't it, John? Absolutely. You know, and I'm not Teddy Atlas. So far, that's a 10-8 round. What do you think, Billy? Was Like, seriously, in all fairness... You know, I don't know, John. I d even though there was a knockdown, I might not give him a 10 and 8. No, we're, <laughs> we're obviously kidding about uh, Teddy Atlas. But, um, hey, we got, we got a, a we, you know, we're getting all these guests coming in, uh, up climbing the ladder up into the rafters where we are. Um, we want to let, John, why don't you introduce our next guest? Come on, you're slacking. Julius Caesar Bunda. Three-time Ontario Golden Glove champion, including 2009 Golden Glove champion. This is a kid we were talking about on uh, Tackin' Boxing with Billy C. That went in and wasted his first guy in under a minute. Easily won the second fight. Julius Bunda, man, what did you think about that first round? Well, to be honest, I missed most of the round walking up here to see you guys. Hey, you know, we were talking about how great you work the body as an amateur. And we can't wait for you to make your pro debut, which is going to be pretty soon. Can you wait to work the body? Are you going to show us more body work when you turn pro or what? I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to work combinations. If, if the guy's got his hands up, I'm going to work the body just to bring his hands down. If he keeps his hands down, I might go straight for the head. It depends on the guy. That's, that's one advantage you're going to have from making that adjustment from amateurs to pro because you, you work the body so well as an amateur. A lot of guys, when they turn pro, they forget about the body, and uh, hey, it's a lost start, and, and I think it's very important in boxing. I think you're going to do well. Well, I, I think it's a very important aspect in boxing. A lot of people, like you said, they forget about it. They go headhunting, and that's it. Yep, yep. 
you know, that was one thing we noticed um, in the first fight, as great as it was. Isaac uh, Mach did a, had a, I thought he had a great performance, but neither one of those two fighters worked the body at all. And his was a case where a guy turned pro and the other fighter only had one pro fight. And uh, neither one worked the body. Yep, you're absolutely right. And I see it as uh, the fights go on this evening, you get a little bit more. I see more and more people punching a little lower. You know, I know, uh, I know you like the men's class, but what did you think of that female bout that that uh, uh, just took place before this fight? I thought it was great. It was exciting. The the females. I've told a lot of my friends when you come out to watch a boxing show, watch the females. They're a lot more vicious. I'll tell you what. That's a good, that's a good description because that fight was vicious. There really wasn't a loser in that one, in my opinion. No, that was definitely a tough call for the judges. Now, how do you feel? I mean, uh, obviously that you've never had to deal with this, but. Uh, we have a fighter here that's, uh, you know, just he's been put down. Oh, oh, and he was just put Kelly down again. On cue. What I was going to say. Chris, Chris <laughs> is on yellow legs, you know. What I was going to say, Julius, is what do you think he's going to do to right the ship? But uh, I guess it just went under again. Uh, he's, he's treading water right now. I think he's just trying to stay afloat while the other guy, he's, he's charging out of full force. He's got to hold on here. Yeah. I've never been in that position, so I still don't know what's going through his head, but I can imagine he's just hoping for the end of the round just to get a little break. Well, the first thing he needs to do is kind of clinch and hold on and get his legs under him instead of trying to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, that's for sure. I think he needs his composure back. And Chris, on the other hand, oh. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Frank, Frank on the other hand. <laughs> hey, John, you know, I mean, I, I can hardly pronounce their names. But Frank, on the other hand, is uh, being, you know, he's being very calm. And I, and I like that because he's not rushing in, making a stupid mistake, although his hands are totally down right now. You know what, though, Big Billy? He has been swinging for the fences. Like, look at the way he's winding up on these punches. You know, Julius, a guy like you, you throw straight down the middle, very sharp. Not that you don't use hooks in, in all of your angles, but, you know, what, what would you do if a guy like Frank is coming at you, winging punches, you know, from around the shoulder, around the moon, and then they're coming at you? I'd be ducking and stepping, but uh, I don't know. I'd be trying to clip him with something short from the inside. That's for sure. His hands are coming back from way behind his head. He's wide open for a hook, for an uppercut, anything like that. Interesting point because a lot of mistake that fighters make is they throw punches from way wide angles. If you notice, a guy like Kelly Pavlik throws straight punches. Boom, boom, one, two. No wasted motion. He doesn't have much speed but his punch arrives quickly because he's not throwing it from a looping angle. A fighter like that would have taken advantage of uh, Frank pretty easily there. Oh, for sure. And I think, I don't know, I think Frank's just getting caught up in the moment and he's just trying to hurt him and, or knock him out. And he's making a lot of mistakes doing that right now because uh, he can get clocked pretty good with his hand contact. Right now he's in the driver's seat. He's and to uh, by five points right now going in the last round. You know, there's two two-point rounds for him and one, you know, where Chris didn't hit the canvas. But it's just like I told you, Billy, this Chris Coin's a tough kid. You knock him down, he's gonna get back up. He wants to fight. Win or lose, this is what he loves to do. But your career doesn't last long when you're finding the canvas a lot of times, John. Well, that's, that, you know, that goes without saying. <laughs> hey, that's because you know you're boxing. <laughs> that's what John's saying to me. <laughs> of, co of course the guy doesn't last long if he's down on the canvas a lot. But again, John, all kidding aside, it's an entertaining fight. I mean, this was really, if any fight has been a one-sided fight, this was the first one. It's already the fourth fight. Absolutely. You know, like we saw Isaac get a shutout in his first fight, and we called it that way. But, you know, we got what we expected out of two very inexperienced men. Um, here's a case where, you know, I think Frankie... He's showing he's a lot more experienced than his record. On paper, this was a great matchup. Uh, we, are, we all knew that Frankie can punch and that Chris has tons of heart and that he's really going to make this into a fight. But I think Frankie stepped it up to a notch even above what I expected. Um, he did this in Quebec the last time out, so I shouldn't really be that surprised. But a little, to be honest with you, a little bit, I, I'm really shocked that he's up by five points, you know, going, well, we're in the fourth round right now, halfway through it. And, He's really dominating you know, Chris Acoin. And, and I'm good friends with Chris. You know, Chris is a great guy, but you know, that's the, the, the spade is a spade, Billy. It doesn't change it to a heart. No, I, 
I agree with you. You know, and to be honest with you, Julius, I I don't think that um, Frank B is showing that much skill here. I mean, uh, you know, he's got a lot of holes in his in his game, but he's just I, I hate to say it, he's outclass. He's he's, he's clearly outclassing uh, Chris A. Coin. He is. He's doing well in the fight, but he could be doing better. He, I see. I notice his hands are down a lot. Yep. Like you said, his punches are wide, and he cocks them back really far. His hands are down now. And now, now I know he's knocked his opponent down twice in this fight, and he's probably feeling real good about himself right now. But you got to be cautious because, you know, like John said, Chris can still uh, land a shot and, uh, you know, turn the tables pretty quickly. Absolutely. You know, the other thing that I'm, I'm really noticing here, you know, about Frankie's style is he, he has the ability to get in there and land some punches, and he's got great footwork. But he's not utilizing his footwork. He's moving in straight forward and he's moving, you know, straight out when he comes backwards. And, you know, in, in, against a more skillful fighter or even a taller fighter than a coin or maybe a faster fighter, you know, all the things that Frankie's showing us right now can very easily disappear. You know, Julius, you're, you're a little bit taller than this guy. You know, I, I, are you considering fighting anywhere near welterweight? No. <laughs> so what's your weight class? Middleweight. Okay, so you're going to be a good 10 pounds bigger than these guys. One thing I noticed is that Frankie's keeping his chin out there. He's holding his chin up. I think he's getting too full of himself in that fight. He's knocking him down. Now, that, you said, Johnny, uh, he's got, you said he's seen him fight before and he's got great footwork. I haven't seen him fight, fight before. But from what I've seen here so far is exactly what he said. Just goes forward, but he's very flat footed. That's all he, I haven't seen him up on his toes at all, almost except when he does a little jump back and that's it, and then goes back down flat on his feet. Well, the one thing that I noticed about Frankie, he's very free footed. You know, he's able to move his feet and really get out of the way of punches with his athletic ability from his legs. His hands are down and he's just barely being missed. What I agree with you on completely is the fact that he's not using his feet properly. He's very wrong. He's not utilizing lateral movement. And real good guys that have forward, look at a guy like Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, they don't move in straight lines forward and backwards. Everything is on arches and angles. Well, this is the fourth and final round. You know, it's obvious that Chris needs a knockout here to win. And, uh, you know, if I'm Frank, I'm going to be smart here. Yeah, you got to play it safe. I, I don't mean, you know, he doesn't have to run necessarily. But, uh, you know, the most important thing is the W. You, you certainly wouldn't want to get a little too careless here. And like uh, John said, Chris A. Coyne has got, uh, he's got some power. Yeah, he's, definitely got, he's definitely got to play it safe now. Keep his hands up more. I hope his corner told him that. Well, I don't know, like... I agree with you completely in keeping his hands up, but I think the worst thing he can do is take the foot off the gas right now and give Chris a chance, you know, to come back and clock him with one. I, I think he should stick with the jab. You know, the lead hook wasn't bad, but keep the right hand up. You know, throw those punches. You know, Chris is trying to right now regain his composure and get back in this fight. You, you give a guy a chance to do that, you know, and it could be lights out. So, you know, I agree completely with, with what you said. Julius, he's got to keep his hands up and finish this fight smart. He doesn't have to take any chances that he obviously doesn't need to take, but he's got to throw the jab. He's got to keep moving. He's got to throw the occasional right hand to keep Chris honest, and he doesn't want to give away free real estate. I think that's the worst mistake he can make right now. No, I, I understand what you're saying, and I, I see that too, because if he lights, if he eases off the pressure, then Chris can definitely utilize that. If he even plays it safe but keeps the pressure on him, I think that'll be the smartest thing for him to do right now. I see that. I think that uh, Frank could be is uh, wide open for an uppercut. The way his hands are down and the way his chin is out, when he goes in like there, his both hands are out of the way, and it looks like a, a for a fighter like Chris Acoin, if he could, un I haven't seen him throw one uppercut, but if he could, I bet you it would uh, gain some respect. And Chris has got very short arms too. Where Frankie's the exact opposite. He's got a tremendous reach. And that's really been a lot of the difference, you know, in his ability to land, where Chris is just missing, even though Frank's hands are down. And, and, and it's just that Frank's been, he's not only been lucky, but he, he's been able to outclass Chris in the sense of staying away from those vicious punches. But, I mean, just barely, you know, it's, and, and here we go. Perfect example. You, you put Frankie in there, you know what? You know, consistent guys that got 10, 15 fights, 
and he's going to have a hard time. The one thing that I can say about our man Julius, who's in the booth with us right now, is I didn't see him showboating, I didn't see him with his hands down, I never seen him take any useless risks, yet he still got the flying victories. You know, in, in the Golden Gloves, and Julius, when you won that tournament, you know, there was no doubt as to who should have won the $25,000 promotional package. So, you know, once again, congratulations for that. And, uh, you know, as this fight winds down, um, is there anything you can tell us about what's going to happen with you next? Uh, what's going to happen with me next? Um, I don't even know. I'm just, uh, I have nothing confirmed yet. We're still looking at a date to confirm for my pro debut. Right now, I'm just going to focus, I'm going to ease off the of work a little bit and focus a little bit more on training. And uh, i got to be able to make that transition to pro properly. I want to be prepared. I need to have good cardio, I believe. That will be a, a good foundation. i got to come back and I need to improve my job, I think. That's one thing I need to work on. Well, we're looking forward to you turning pro and uh, I hope it's sooner than later, that's for sure. And the middleweight, like when we had you on the show a couple weeks ago, the middleweight division needs guys like you, man. We're it's about one of the weaker divisions right now, and that's unusual. Usually the middleweight division is chock full of talent. And, uh, wait, we're looking at you with some younger fighters coming up and save the middleweights. Well, I hope that I can bring some fire back to that division, bring it to life. Well, we got faith in you, that's for sure. But uh, how, how did you see this fight going? One-sided. One-sided. One -sided. Right. right. It's one-sided. Right. right. I mean, there's no... There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. It was clearly uh, two different levels of fighters here. Absolutely. Well, we'll wait for the official score. But uh, my my unofficial card has uh, Frank B winning very easily. Yeah. And quite honestly, I'm surprised he didn't win by a knockout. Oh, he was close. This is one of those fights where you know, on paper, it looked like a good tilt. Chris Coin has got one heck of a chin. That we've known from day one. You know, here's a guy that he loves to fight. So you can beat him up. All you're gonna do is make him happy because this is what he loves to do. It might sound a little bit sick, but you know, I gotta give Chris full credit. A lot of guys come in and get hit like that and they crumble. He definitely didn't crumble, but he was outclassed undoubtedly. And you know, this isn't even a shot at, a, at an Ontario a Boxing Council title yet, but you know, Frankie Abibi just made a case for himself uh, in the future. You know, to be a guy that I would consider on that level. I could see him fighting for an OBC title in the near future. Well, and as we all thought here in the booth, it was a unanimous decision. All three judges at Ringside scored the fight 40 to 34 in favor of Frank Abi. We're going to take a break and train uh, with the best. Clean out our ears. All this noise. Train with the best. 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 Train with the best.